Welcome to Mark D. Maker. My name is Mark Taylor, and today we're going to be doing the Goldfinch Wings. So, last time we did the body of the Goldfinch, and today we're going to be working on the wings. I've already started these, and we'll be working on these. So we started off with a, a one inch thick piece of basswood, traced out the outer perimeter of the feather. We chopped that in half, giving this two half inch that's still too thick. Chopped it down again, split with the uh, bandsaw, and that gives us four quarter inch wings. We have the patterns from the book in which I showed you. Patterns for both top and bottom of the wing. So come on over to the workbench. Let's get started. <clears throat> All right. So here we have the progress on these wings. These wings are just getting ready to get started. And here we have our Xerox pattern. Now, for some reason, a lot of the pattern books, they only put one side of the wing. So what you end up having to do is to take your Xerox copy of that wing and you can see that's on the back, tape it up onto a window during daylight hours and you can see these lines and trace it to get the other side of the wing. Now, some of you with computer skills could take that and be able to flip it. I'm not sure what that's called. I'm a, I'm a dinosaur when it comes to computers. Flip it in some sort of software program and use that. Uh, you could probably be more accurate like that. But the first thing we're going to do is take some sort of adhesive. I'm using... Um, a glue stick you can use it spray I use the spray adhesive here it's just harder to clear off the paper where you're not carving if you're using spray adhesive I've kind of trimmed the back of it down with a, a gouge you want this side of the wing is going to have a little thickness to it and a little meat to it because that's where the muscles and the bones are and this edge is going to be as thin as a feather so you just have to determine uh, where the height the height of the feathers I'm making these feathers arch up a little bit um, so that so I ended up shaving off the bottom I'm not sure what I'm going to do here I may take these down and make this lower We'll see. Um, I've rounded this. This is actually going to be the, the top part of the wing. So this is actually going to go on like so. And I've eased this over. I'm going to adhere it on like so. And... Uh, and we'll be ready to go. I've already glued one on to there. And this one's going to be this flip side. So that's going to go like that. We're going to glue that on like that. And we will start carving. All right, so here we have the wings with the patterns, patterns glued onto them. Um, just for reference, you can see size. So now you wouldn't you wouldn't do your wings this way if you were a high level competitor in like the Ward World Championship. You would you would come up with your own patterns by studying and, and reference and 
research. But for uh, an art piece, for a beginner, uh, getting into the bird carving scene, definitely do this first so you get the feel and, and understanding of the layout and, and uh, what you're in for. So what, what I like to do, I just start off with an X-Acto knife and we'll come in here on each feather and define each feather's shape with an X-Acto knife. lot of different ways of doing it but for someone new to bird carving someone new to doing an open wing uh, I think this is a really uh, decent way to start to learn how to do open wings Sometimes it takes some real concentration to be able to stay on the line. It becomes a little hard to see, but luckily each one of these feathers, the outline of each feather is, uh, is highlighted. It has a natural highlight to it. So there's definitely texture here. You can feel it raised where the paper was cut. And since this feather's on top and all these feathers are laying underneath, you'll start here and cut up to that stop line. have to redefine it a little bit now this is just one way of doing it um, drawing drawing all these in taking measurements um, is how a lot of people do them. They they don't uh, just glue the pattern on to uh, the wood, but um, it's a shortcut. And it's one way to do it for an art piece. You wouldn't want to compete with it. Judges would probably be able to know exactly, oh, he took this pattern from this book because um, judges at that level, at like the world level, man, they're knew their stuff. So this defines each feather and it gives you a step And you'll end up with with a, a set like this after doing all of them. Now, when you get down to these feathers, the the uh, primary 
flight feathers. I like to create more separation in there. So um, kind of really come in and, and take a chunk. And when I say chunk, that's what I mean. Take a little bit bigger piece, causing more separation. Now, if you are going in competing, you want to you want to use the references that you've built up. When I've done a competitive piece, in other words, what I do is I will have a board, much like a vision board, with at least 20, 30 pictures on that board, sometimes 50, 100 reference photos, and, and I'm following that to a T with um, an art piece that we're doing, this. Um, you want to take advantage of shapes and use them to your advantage. Like there's a recurring pattern or something like that. You could go from big to small or 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 what have you. And I'll show you, especially in modeling, um, like the, the breast of the bird or the um, where you have a lot of repetitive patterns going. Um, use a little artistic uh, license in those areas so you may be able to like pull the eye in more or to a specific area. Um, if you have a, a habitat and, and you want your story to be, um, you know, the bird likes these particular flowers or tree branches and you really put a lot of time into it, you want, you want it to work together to all complement each other. You may be able to do something with the feather pattern to enhance the whole art piece. Tight together, make it part of the composition. So these are just stop cuts that I'm doing for the different feather groups. I'm coming in and just removing the tiniest bit of wood just so that the particular feather group sticks out. feather group here, here, and these down here. And, and these feather groups are going to be landscaped hills. This is going to be a hill. This is going to be a hill. And these feathers come up underneath here and attach. So these are going to, these are going to be undercut to these two hills. Now, you see I'm just using an exacto knife for this. There's, you don't need any fancy tools or special tools for this. This is a number 11 exacto knife, and it's actually a knockoff from exacto. And um, the handle is actually a, a little better than exacto has. I, maybe they have this on some of theirs. But this is how you loosen the blade 
with this handle back here and and there's four uh, grips here holding the blade and with this particular brand it really holds good and tight um, with some of the exactos they only have a one slit and they just doesn't hold as as good sometimes the the blade will come right out I'm gonna go ahead and define these different feather groups and as far as tools go for for many years um, I, I use just a bench knife and an exacto knife um, I had uh, in one of my videos I was I was showing uh, some new tools micro tools that I got micro gouges a V gouge and U gouge from a flex cut and flex cuts a, a decent brand um, I would recommend it for for most carvers um, when you get up to uh, buying a healthy it does make a difference healthy is a, a high quality tool um, and but when I was showing the flex cut someone uh, com commented uh, oh amateur tools and I'm here to say it's not the tool it's the skill behind the tool that can make it work I've seen master carvers with just a scalpel do amazing things and I've seen carvers with probably the best tools money can buy make a mess of things it's the skill it's nice to collect the the nice tools don't get me wrong I, I love my my healthy and and my Swiss made gouge set and and the nicer tools that I have are wonderful but I would never put down a lesser tool like a flex cut or anything like that and and or call anybody's tool an amateur tool it's the it's the skill behind it that counts And what you want is a really, really thin blade for doing this part. Now I do run into a little bit of a situation here because I wrapped this around as I glued it. The patterns are designed to lay flat and not be glued around a rounded surface. If I would if if I would have left it flat, like I did here, or or uh, on on the back side, if I would have put the the pattern and kind of um, project down through that, it's more accurate. And you can see how that that fits. That fits um, exactly and how when it gets glued down see how this edge is without so without the pattern covering it so what I'm gonna have to do is is kind of adjust the pattern a little bit and because I'm not competing with it I, I really don't care it's not gonna make that big of a difference nobody's going to be able to tell really when it comes down to it they're going to be looking at the overall bird they're not going to be going in and counting all the major flight feathers here so 
So just uh, something to keep in mind when you're competing. Uh, you won't be using a pattern out of a book. Uh, you'll be coming up with your own pattern, uh, most likely um, drawing in each feather on your own. When I'm scoring these lines, I'm turning both the piece and the knife. I'm twisting the knife in my hand, like so, and turning the wood. It just makes hitting these curves just a little bit easier. And you can also just come back and notch out all these pieces. And there's tons of different ways of doing it. This is just some tips on how I do it. A lot of the a lot of the professional bird carvers um, do their whole bird using a Dremel tool or a, a micromotor, much like use a micromotor like this. It's a micromotor there. And it's, it's a rotary tool. More expensive than a Dremel, but um, a little more refined machine. And here's another way to do it, a, a detail burner. So you can use a detail burner to come in and put these lines in for you and they'll give you uh, like a stop cut. You can use your burn lines as a stop cut and, and it does seem to be a little easier. The only thing is, you have to be careful, and I can smell it now, is the glue that I glued that down with, uh, it vaporizes that glue and you can really smell it. Pretty stinky. But this, this makes it easy to move a little quicker and uh, let's peel it off you just don't want to burn too hot I think this is this is set at a number three because um, if you go too hot it'll um, it will be more work later cleaning it up put sprayed a lot of glue I use spray glue on it and it uh, it's really sticky but you can see here how defined that is and then you would cut out a uh, 
piece like so. And that will give you a definition between this feather and this feather. It makes it look like this feather is going underneath that feather. All right, another way is to use a V gouge. And but these V gouges have to be sharp. And you're leaning them away from. I'm leaning it to the left. So one side is creating a vertical shelf and the other side's going out and, and relieving the wood to the side. And if it's not sharp, you'll get tear out. So as soon as you start seeing like a rough tear out, um, get, the, get your uh, V-gouge over to the strop. So this is my micro gouge by flex cut and here's the standard gouge you're just not going in deep using just the tip and doing the same thing and this one I can tell is not as sharp Doing pretty good though. So this is a micro motor. It's a battery operated one. I made a little leather case case for it. And you can hear how quiet it is. It's really nice and quiet. And we'll go in and kind of smooth things out. You can do this with sandpaper if you don't have the micro motor. It's, it's all right. I've done that for years. This is a new addition for me, really. I have a diamond bit on it right now. So this is a diamond bit. Now if you're car carving through the paper that has the glue on it, the glue will heat up and stick to this bit. So you'll have to clean the bit periodically. So another tool or is this, it's a stick, plastic stick, and it has these uh, re refillable uh, sandpaper bands and and these are spring loaded so you can you could twist them get some new sandpaper on them usually you can do I can do it with one hand but so it's spring loaded and now we got some fresh sandpaper here and you can get in and get nice flat surfaces for this. I, I love this, this tool, it works so nice. You can just follow those edges that you've cut and get nice flat surfaces. Um, I don't remember how much this costs, but I've seen it on Amazon, at Woodcraft, um, a couple of wood carving supply places these things are great before I found these I was making my own so I was using emery boards so emery boards work good along the same same way you can use them for, for sanding long edges or, or whatever but you can also take sandpaper and wrap it around small pieces and basically do the same thing as this stick does. But this set, there's uh, four of them came in a set. 
Um, and they were like 22 bucks. And you get plenty of refills to, to keep you busy. Keep you in business there. And so for years I just used popsicle sticks or, or paint sticks, carve them into what I want if it's a round. Um, take a round dowel and wrap some sandpaper around it and you hit the round spots in your carving, you know, if you're coming up underneath the beak or something like that. Very helpful. Also, if you need to get into a round spot, you can use the back of this to, let's say you have a concave area, you can get into it like that. Hopefully this video has been helpful to you. Please share, like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.